Good stuff. Good stuff. to get this drain finished. There was a large rainstorm heading our way and uh, you know it was muddy but we decided just to go ahead and try to knock this thing out before it got here. It's trying to go in there. See? Just stained your paint out. Making this Pro Gator have purple spots. Well, you got the Vikings, so I guess that's what Okay. And I uh, should have bought more glue. This stuff doesn't do that far. Not when you slop it on there like I do, anyway. Yeah, plenty. This stuff will dry out by the time I use it again. So, enough is enough. It's good to me. Just like 
I'll take the hose. I'll take that, and you use this to hold the thing down while you're stepping out. There you go. Nothing else. Ah, you did it. <clears throat> Me and Al spent probably a good hour washing this stone that was shoveling in this ditch. We just used a water hose and a rake and. Shuffled this stuff around and sprayed it until we started getting you know, clear water running out of the back of this gator. Had the dump bed slightly tilted. <laughs> we did that for three loads, trying to trying to limit the amount of fines that you know, we put into our drain here. Cameras being around. No, not at all. Takes, it does take a while. I don't have cameras in my life, so <laughs> this is, yeah. Why am I going? <laughs> what the, what the, what's going like, on? You're like, what's that noise? <laughs> what's what? that noise? Is that Al again? Yeah, what Al. is with this guy? He's just a sound weirdo. Effect. You know, <laughs> weird everybody dude. does that stuff. So me and Al got this thing buttoned up just in time for a good rain shower to come through. It's definitely working. We got water coming out the other side of the pipe. A lot of the water that's up here will, it'll well, a lot of the water that's up here is coming off the roof. And you know, once I get the downspout into the connection here, it will help with a lot of this water. But it's doing what I want it to do, running down this way, getting caught into the drain, and out over into the creek where it belongs.
Yeah, you're kind of drifting that way, so keep it, keep it out. I'll start digging that to the side. Yeah. So what we're doing right now is just digging to a roundabout depth and roundabout width on these footers. That'll all be cleaned up when we're done. We're just following my layout lines relatively close, using our line level, hitting spots, making sure we're at the depth that we need to be, and just moving on. And this trench will be cleaned up as far as its width. You know, we can uh, we can form the footing if we need to, but we really don't want to go any wider than than we need to, obviously. So. The final depth and stuff will be all finished by hand. Right now, Al's just doing the, the, the majority of the earth removal. Let me show you Al's uh, setup on this hillside. So right now, Al is perched out on this rock here. I mean, it's hard to really tell on video. This looks like probably nothing. But uh, I guarantee you that it is, and it's not real stable. So Al's doing a really good job up there, uh, keeping his keeping his cool, and uh, you know we're making good progress. And Al worked daylight till dark, rain or shine. I mean, it rained half the time he was here, but we kept the tarps down for the majority of the time and just kept on working. If, if I would not have had these tarps on this building, you know, it would have been farther behind than, than it is now. We would have had nothing but a mud hole to dig into. And you would not have wanted to get this excavator in here on muddy ground on this hillside. I mean, it was sketchy enough uh, as is. We had a little trouble here. I had dug part of the foundation by hand and I'd thrown parts of the concrete floor in the hole so I could bring in the bobcat without worrying about <laughs> falling in the hole that I dug. But that ended up causing us some trouble. Uh, this little excavator does not have the highest ground clearance and it was getting hung up under there and every time Al would move it would <laughs> scoot closer to the to the precipice or the hillside here and you know, risk him sliding off into the abyss. He wasn't he wasn't happy about it, but you know it, it worked out. We ended up stacking some of these blocks under the tires and we just kept going. In the end, we removed all the concrete and just filled the do the hole that I dug with dirt and just kept on rolling.
big one. Quite a bit of time in the seat of this Pro Gator now, and I can confidently say that this is a pretty nice machine. I think they're fairly pricey. Definitely not overpowered, probably 20, 25 mile an hour, I'm thinking top speed. It's geared extremely low. Like first gear is almost useless. But having a really small motor, I guess, you know, it helps. And this is not a ATV, this is a utility vehicle. So for its intended purpose, this thing's awesome plenty of room to get in with muddy feet you know kind of sitting really over top of the steer wheels which kind of feels a little weird when you drive it it will easily haul this bed completely full of you know, rocks or dirt and dump it with no problem and I've yet to get this thing stuck or even spin it in four-wheel drive and I'm driving in suit so I just wanted to you know give an update on this thing I showed it in the last video but you know, I just said I was impressed with it, and that definitely hasn't changed. Um, this machine is is nice, for sure. So the last support in my row of supports holding up this building needs to come out, or at least it needs to be moved. This one's holding up a large oak beam that spans the doorway here. And it's in the way of our footing. We're almost done with all the machine work as far as you know, digging the footer. But this one has to go, unfortunately. It needs to be moved in to about right here. So I'm going to jack this up. I got a new post here. I'm going to put it under here and then let it down just so I can clear up this area to finish up the digging. It's all screwed to the top anyway, so it's not really going to get it. That's it. Is it off? Is off here? That's it. Can you remove that? Yeah. Oh, it's got enough shot here. Nice! Very nice.
gonna be a while. Look at the camera though, he's still not being recorded there. Can you spin the screws without spinning the jack? Yeah, I mean, we have to let the pressure off, obviously. Right. Okay. Cool, then. I was thinking otherwise you got to take those, uh, take all the screws out and, uh... Yeah, I designed it to where you could turn the screw without taking the plate on. Or taking the jack loose from the ground. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I kind of thought that would be necessary. The weight off. Yep, if you load one, it just takes the weight off the next one and you keep going back and forth. That's what I did when I originally uh, took the load off this roof. Just back and forth, checking back and forth. And then when I was done, I made sure that they were all, uh, you know, relatively loaded. And then put in the two before uh, braces to keep the jacks from leaking off. It worked. Yeah, so far, anyway. Oops. That one I can't do. So right now, me and Al are trying to level the roof of this building. You know, it had obviously some major foundational issues on the lower side, and this wall had sank quite a bit. This upper front corner of the shop, six inches different from our zero, which is the upper, uh, I guess you'd call that the right-hand corner of the shop. So we zeroed on the bottoms of our truss using the zip level, checked both the, this front corner and the back corner on the upper side of the shop. They're relatively close, within an inch or so. This front corner, six inches lower than our zero point. But the back corner of the shop, uh, two inches lower. So we're using the jacks and these temporary supports that I put in to uh, bring this roof 
back to level so we can get a good starting point for where the foundation is going to be, at least the height of the foundation. But it's working out pretty good actually, using the zip level, just touching the bottoms of the truss. That thing's definitely handy. inches so we're just going to continue to work this front corner by manipulating these jacks and bringing it up and then eventually uh, if we go back and forth enough uh, we'll have the roof of this building at least really close. So same as I have up there, two plumb bobs representing, this one represents the outside corner of the block. That one out there represents just the outside edge of the block. Both of these are reference points. So I've marked where they're hanging from. I've pulled my measurement for the, for the footer, marked it on my string. You see I've hooked to a string over there that also has marks on it, all the same stakes outside of where I'm working so this really works well So I'm checking the bottom of the trench. <laughs> I want it to be, you know, it's it's a mud bottom or dirt bottom, right? But it will affect the thickness of, of my foundation. So I don't want a large variation in this thing. No more than an inch from one end to the other would be would make me happy. Uh, so I'm going around using the, the zip level, checking, skimming off the high spots and you know calling it good. Doesn't have to be perfect. But I don't want my foundation to be, you know, four inches thinner in one spot than in the other.
Well, I'm back to using the laser. My buddy Al pulled out this morning with all of his equipment. I'm headed back home. He spent several days down here with me trying to move this project along as far as we could in the time that we had. And I'd have to say that we got quite a bit done. Got our hillside cleaned out. Got the trench dug. Al's not a fan of heights. And I can't believe he volunteered to actually come down here and perch that little excavator out on this hillside, knowing that the ground here is just full of rocks and clay. It's hard to dig. That little excavator shifted around quite a bit, you know, trying to pull through this and uh, shimmied over towards the hillside several times. When Al left here, the seat on his excavator had an extra hump in the center from all the clenching that went on <laughs> while he uh, dug this. I just can't say enough good stuff about Al. If the world was full of Al's, we'd all be in much better shape, that's for sure. Very generous, very caring, very intelligent. And uh, I don't have to double check anything that guy done because he was he was on it. So thank you, Al. I definitely appreciate it and I look forward to, to seeing him again, that's for sure. But I got to move forward. I got to keep rolling. I'm going to check with my laser all the spots on this roof just to make sure that it hasn't settled. When me and Al left it uh, yesterday, it was in good shape. But I'm just going to check it again, pull some measurements, then check the depth of my trench. I've got some quotes coming. Uh, for some guys to come in and pour this uh, footer. So it's moving forward. I'm excited about it. This thing's just harder to use than that zip level, but it works. So here's a little closer look at the laser. It's a Bosch Professional B2152. It comes with what you see here, just the, the laser head, the tripod, the scale, and then the transmitter. Now you don't have to use this transmitter. Hopefully you can see that laser shows up pretty well on this measuring rod. And, uh, you know, if you're not trying to get within a, you know, human hair, uh, you can do just fine with uh, without the uh, transmitter. So I'm going to use it without the transmitter. I'm going to go around, poke on this seal plate around the top of this roof and make sure that, uh, you know, nothing's moved. So the lighting's not good in here. Even though it's somewhat overcast out here and I've got the majority of my tarps down, these lasers are still hard to see. That's the major downfall, in my opinion, to the laser, is that they're just almost impossible to see in really bright sunlight. And that's where the transmitter comes in handy. But all I'm going to do is touch this scale to the seal plate and get my reading, which is six foot, uh, six foot seven and three quarter inches, right here, basically in this corner. And I'm going to walk down through here and just make sure that that number stays within a you know, quarter inch, half inch. I mean, this is wood we're dealing with here. So there's six foot eight inches. Okay, so right in the middle. If I can get out of the way of the laser. That's, you also have to have a direct line of sight between the, the laser and the scale. So there is six foot eight inches so it's looking good so far to the middle so let's check this far end everywhere else is looking pretty good so far so, yep six foot eight inches within the width of the laser anyway for here to there which is plenty good enough so i checked it against my reference over there in the corner we're good to go. Now I can start relying on this as a reference as well. So check out how much this front jack had to be raised and they taper off towards the back because it was it didn't need to be raised as much in order to get this roof back level. Now the upper part of this shop is pretty stable. It's within an inch from front to back because it's sitting on bedrock. You know that I expected it to be good. But the lower part of this shop was built on field dirt with no foundation, just a pad with block on it. So it settled and the floor cracked. I'm either assuming these people did not know what to do in order to get a building to be stable or they tried to save a few dollars. If what they did was trying to save money, man, they made a huge mistake because every penny that they spent on this building to build it was completely wasted. The building was valueless. Once it cracked, it had no value. In fact, it 
it was an expense to the next person who bought the property to, in order to tear it down. So they wasted all the money that they spent on this building and they devalued their property in order to save a few dollars if that was their intent, was to save money. So I think it's a good lesson really. I mean it is to me, I'm not a construction guy and I don't deal with foundations and stuff every day. But if you're going to spend some money on a building, make sure it's spent on what the building sets on and not necessarily on the paint and the you know, knickknacks that you hang around inside the building. Spend it where it matters because you definitely don't want to be in this situation. Because talk about a ton of work to get this thing back straight. But it's coming along nice and it'll be perfectly good and usable when I'm done with it. So I'm just kind of working this corner, making sure it's where it needs to be. Uh, checking it with a plumb bob up against my strings, and that'll get it plenty close enough. And after running all these, these lines so many times, I've definitely noticed a huge difference in between the heavier, coarser, in my opinion, better string, and then the cheap, thin stuff. This cheap, thin stuff is just really slick. It's got a really, it's a twist, I guess, and not a braid. So if you go to make a knot in it, it does not hold a knot really well. Plus, you know, you set it up and then you come back the next day and it's all drooped and sagged because it stretches. This heavier grade of string is so much better to work with. You can actually trip over these and not, uh, not break them. So don't waste your time on that thin string if, you, if you're ever interested. Get the heavy stuff. It's just worth it. So I don't know that I've specified what I'm actually doing as far as a footer here. Now it's going to be what's referred to as a trench beam as best as I understand. So it'll be basically, it'll act like an I-beam but it'll be made of concrete. And I'm not exactly for sure on the concrete that I'm going to use. i got to talk to the guys that you know, are actually going to be pouring the concrete here. Whatever they can pump because this has to be pumped in. So we'll see on that. But it'll be 24 inches wide, 16 inches thick. It'll have four runs of number five rebar in it. So if it was to lose support because of erosion or something on a portion of it, it should be more than capable of you know, holding its own weight plus what little I'll have on it. It'll have a few runs of CMU or concrete block that are grouted solid. Then it'll have the wood on top of that and it'll be holding up the rest of this uh, wood and tin roof, which is in reality not all that much weight considering what we have here as far as a footprint should be more than more than substantial and should last hopefully as long as I'm alive I know I don't want to be the guy that has to come in and bust this out to, when that time comes that's what I'm doing should be should be good I think all right guys that's it this week huge progress really feels so good to have this trench dug I was concerned that you know I was going to hit patches of bedrock and have to you know step this thing five times yeah i didn't know what i was going to run into uh, i knew i'd run into rock i was just hoping i didn't run into a bunch of big ones like i ran into in this back corner down here a couple weeks ago but luckily we didn't and man al sure went out of his way to help me out i mean who does that you know drives hours with their equipment to come help some guy out that uh, you know they just watch on video so it was it was nice and I definitely appreciate it. I can't think of really any other piece of equipment that would have done as well as that little excavator did on this job. Seeing as, I mean, look how tight that is. You know, he's walking a tightrope with that uh, excavator. It's kind of hard to tell on video. Not many people would want to sit on an excavator on that hillside. And neither did Al, but he did and I appreciate it. And we made good progress. Got the drain in. Got the hillside cleaned out and my, my trench. So, got some guys coming in to give me a quote on uh, pouring this footer. Then I should have some guys coming today to give me a quote on the block work. And then they'll be framing. I got to find some good windows. I'm not for sure where that's where those are going to come from, but we'll see. Um, maybe a nice workbench here, looking out over the stream. It'll be relaxing. I could, I'll, I'll be able to use it for sure by the time I'm done with this project, some relaxation anyway. So huge thanks to Al. You know, 
and like I said, can't say thanks enough. I owe him big time. And huge thanks to anybody who's helped me out on this project because a lot of people, I mean, just encouraging words is, is good, but I've had a lot of people, you know, step up and, you know, give me a hand. So it's appreciated, as you can imagine. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. If you need anything, send me an email. Click on my little guy to subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications. Share the videos. That always helps. And that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.